Hey guys, last lesson was about free particle and I solved it for you giving the solutions of the, of the wave function uh, solutions that are showing the equation. Now many of you may have been left a bit dumbfounded at the end of the lesson because I really did not take that time to explain what is the physical meaning. Now those good students who caught it, well, uh, good to you. But then, you know, maybe let's just take a short lesson to really explain, you know, whether these solutions are physical, okay? It's not so easy to understand. But then as, you know, as we analyze more problems, we can really see what these physical interpretations are about. So the question we want to answer today, okay, the sole question we want to answer today is a continuous state physical. Alright, did I mention that a continuous state corresponds to the solutions of the free particle, okay? It is because for a free particle, the potential equals to zero for any x, okay? We know that, and then we solve the time independent of the equation. It can be written in this form, where k squared is, oh, sorry, k is the wave number, uh, k squared is positive, okay? And then the solutions are given as a linear combination of e to the i k x and e to the minus i k x. And then we can also say that, remember, since it's a free particle, there's no potential, there are no boundary conditions. So there are no boundary conditions, there are no restrictions to the energy of the particle. And since there are no energy, uh, restrictions to the energy of the particle, we have these two oscillating um, oscillating solutions, which we'll see why in a minute. Reasons of which we'll see why in a minute. And since for all energy, all energy values, okay, the, the solutions are oscillating, we say it's a continuous state, okay, for all energy values. Remember, um, technically, it's a continuous solution for all energy values. As long as it's a continuous solution for all energy values, it becomes a continuous state. Some um, some solutions, you know, it'll be a continuous solution uh, for certain energy values and a bound solution for certain energy values. That's why, you know, we can't say it's a state. But right now for a free particle, we know it's a continuous state. So the main question, is a continuous state physical, all right? Also draw your attention to this thing called the di diverging uh, decaying solutions, which has nothing to do today, okay? It has nothing to do with today. So to answer whether this, is a, this continuous state has a physical meaning, we go back to the probability density. Right, we always go back to the probability density. Remember, quantum mechanics, we need an entity to describe particle-like behavior, wave-like behavior. The solutions to the Schrodinger equation helps us achieve that. And it's the probability density that tells us whether it has a physical meaning, whether the wave solutions have a physical meaning. So, the probability density, the magnitude of the wave function x and squared, this is the probability density, and it's the probability of finding the particle from x to x plus dx. Now, we want to go through uh, thoroughly how are we going to calculate this from this, which is quite easy if your trigonometry is good, okay, out of all things. Now, um, this squared, right, so basically I'm taking the magnitude of this solution, okay, kx plus a minus e to the minus i kx. Now, why is it plus and minus? Because they represent the waves going to the right and going to the left, and then I'll square that. So, when I rewrite that as the trigonometry identities, I can write um, a i cosine kx plus a plus i sine um, kx, right? And then I'll plus again uh, a minus cosine kx. Remember, it's actually cosine um, k minus kx, but the cosine function, I can absorb the minus sign. And then after this, I will minus a k minus i sine kx, right? I might take the magnitude squared. I believe I did that correct. The minus sign inside the argument, I can bring it out for the sine function. Now after that, I would again take the magnitude, the magnitude of this time I'll group the cosine functions, oh sorry, group the real functions actually because the, the cosine functions are our real functions. I will get a plus plus a minus and then I will also do the same for the imaginary part, okay, which is a minus, sorry, a subscript plus minus a subscript minus um, i sine kx. Alright, now as we can see over here, once I'm writing this form, it's easy to take the magnitude because all we need to do is take the square of the real part and then I would add that with the square of the imaginary part, right? And I'll take the square root, okay, because it's the magnitude, but because I have a square over here, the, the square root cancels, right? So, I mean, if you really want me to write it in full, it's actually like this, so okay, square roots, that would be a plus plus a minus squared, I have a cosine squared, k, x, right? And plus uh, a plus a minus squared, and I have a sine squared, k uh, squared, yeah, my uh, sine squared kx. I take the square root and then I'm actually swing that. So ultimately what I get, okay, and I also want to use a trigonometry identity, cosine squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared, right? So a plus plus a minus um, 1 minus sine squared kx 
Okay, using the trigonometry identity, this goes into here like that. And I get an a plus minus a minus and a sine squared kx, all right? And then what I will ultimately get, okay, after this, I can group the sine functions. You will see why I will do that. I will plus a sine kx, sine squared kx, and then the coefficients of which are, that would be this, this minus this, okay? So it's k uh, plus k minus, uh, sorry, I missed out a square over here, okay? k plus minus k, a, a minus squared, and then I'll minus that, I will minus from that uh, k, uh, a plus plus a minus. All right, square that. Okay, and that is all that is I have, right. Now, you can really don't pay so much attention to all these uh, constants, okay, because really they are set by, you know, the, the, the what we, we want to set it them as, okay, they're arbitrary. But pay attention to the sine squared. So what I ultimately get is something like a blah, 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 blah and then a sine squared kx. Now, what I can say about this is that this is what ultimately gives us our oscillating dense, um, probability density function. Remember about that? So, um, this number over here, okay, which is really all these constants, they bring us up to somewhere over here, and then when we plus the, the sine squared, I will get this oscillating function, this oscillating prob probability density function, okay, which if I were to draw it, I'll draw it as this over here. There we have it, okay, there we go. Now, with that in place, okay, which, which as you know is given by this uh, psi x uh, squared, right? So with that in place, what can we conclude? Now, take some time and, and think about that. The probability density gives us the probability of finding the particle from x to x plus dx. What we are essentially doing is integrating the magnitude of the wave function squared, which is our probability density, okay, integrating that from dx, right? So, what I can show you right now is because since the wave function is oscillating like that, all right, and notice that you know it goes to minus infinity to infinity. If I would just simply pick any boundary over here, all right, and integrate that, I can very likely get an answer like 4.0. Okay, does that make sense? Because it's from minus infinity to infinity. So even though if this uh, constant doesn't bring the function that high, I can still increase the width, right? I'll just increase the width to get a larger area. And after that, I can just simply integrate the probability density from, let's just say, this region over here. And when I do that, I will get a number like 7.0. So, what does this tell us? This tells us that I have the solutions to the free particle, it's a continuous state, and I will take the probability density, and I get something like that. And there's a 4.0 chance, okay, using probability, of finding the particle in this region. Not only that, there's a 7.0 chance of finding the particle in this region over here. That does not make sense at all because the probability of finding the particle should be equal to one if I consider the whole region. I mean, it's already absurd, and I mean absurd, to find the probability of the particle over here as 4.0. I do that plus this, I get a probability of 7.0. Of finding the particle in these two regions is absurd altogether. Quantum mechanics is like that, okay? So when we have this, we actually say that a continuous state is unphysical, okay, it's unphysical. And after that, how we were to resolve this was using the Fourier transform, which I also talked about in the last lesson. But there you go. So the answer of the whether a continuous state is physical, the answer is no, because the probability density, okay, you get these funny things over here, okay, which can't be normalized. I say the, the proper term for it is it can't be normalized, and you know, that's why it is unphysical, right? Thanks.